Open Access Publishing still has some questions related to the two, uh, two, um, two um, techniques that are, or two ways of uh, achieving Open Access Publishing, uh, the green and the gold. And the questions uh, uh, related to Open Access often involve around this question, uh, can I choose the green Open Access or should I uh, choose the gold Open Access? And this has uh, implications to, uh, for, from the very beginning of the project. Uh, it has implications to the budgeting and also how data can be uh, used. So golden, Gold Open Access is uh, the service or product that publishers are now selling in Open Access Publishing and it provides immediate open access and also wide uh, possibilities of free use of articles, including text and data mining uh, in, in many cases for the articles that are opened as gold open access. Uh, so, so these decisions, which route to take, are, are very important. And of course, parallel publishing from university viewpoint uh, has great advantages. And as uh, our researchers are producing the articles, uh, being uh, referees, uh, we would like to have at the university and for the researchers uh, the parallel publishing, the green route, without these uh, fees that are involved with the gold open access. Um, so uh, when deciding about which route to take, uh, you have to if you work in a funded project, you have to take uh, into consideration uh, the funders' requirements. And um, when European Union Commission started to demand, require 100% open access publishing at the Horizon 2020 uh, program, that was a game changer in openness in Europe. With the 72 billion uh, euros, this has a great influence on how uh, open access publishing is done. And um, Antti already showed you what is agreed in the grant agreement about research data. Uh, and this is also agreement that uh, research funders sign. Uh, they have to, must ensure open access. And that's defined here, free of charge online access. Uh, to peer-reviewed scientific publications relating to its results. So one thing to notice about this that it's not that all results should be open. It's the peer-reviewed scientific uh, articles and uh, publications that should be open. So uh, the opening is, uh, open access publishing is done after it's decided uh, which uh, results to protect and which to publish. So patenting, uh, registering intellectual property, that's still encouraged. Commercialization, uh, so uh, th this is again, like Ella talked about this team, conscious decision. Uh, you decide, for example, what you're going to patent and then publishing is done after that. So not all, uh, research results are public uh, or open access published. Uh, then uh, the open access is a spectrum. There are different versions of articles and that is defined here. In Horizon it has to be the final peer-reviewed manuscript. Uh, and then here again, what we have also from the publisher side the beneficiary must aim to deposit at the same time the research data needed to validate the results presented. So this is an uh, incurring team that also in the open access publishing uh, we see these uh, questions about how do I provide uh, the uh, research data needed to validate this publication. And then there are the embargoes of Horizon 2020 uh, the six months, within six months of publication or for humanities, uh, 12 uh, months. 
uh, and then there's some metadata and like that. So open access uh, is uh, defined quite, uh, quite widely in Horizon 2020 and uh, open access uh, has different degrees of openness. So again, it's not a black and white question, is it open or is it not open? It's a spectrum of openness. And um, a legal tool to define how open it is it uh, are the Creative Commons licenses. And if I have some time, uh, I will, I will uh, show you the how to choose the license tools. I think the Creative Commons tools have become the tools that one has, has to know how to use if you want to operate in the scientific community. If you want to operate in the field of open science, uh, you have to know these tools. So uh, previously, such tools as PowerPoint and Word, they were tools that everyone knows how to use. And uh, my understanding now is that these Creative Commons licenses are, are similar tools that you have to know how to use them. Of course, I'm, I'm a bit prejudiced here as Aalto University is also Creative Commons affiliate organization and, and my team was uh, leading uh, in, in translating these licenses to, uh, to Finnish. So, so I'm very, very fond of these licenses and, 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 and um, also proposing their wider use, use in Finland. Uh, so here are examples of what kind of open access publishing is done using different licensing options. Uh, so when you choose, for example, Sp Springer Open, Gold Open, uh, you have that immediately and they are uh, uh, deposit in at least one widely and internationally recognized open access repository uh, such as uh, uh, repository uh, participating, for example, in open, open air. And um, uh, the license agreed is Creative Commons attribution uh, license, which is also the license uh, recommended by the Finnish uh, open, uh, open Science and Research Project, and also from the Ministry of Science side, this license is um, uh, the license chosen to open the public sector information uh, reuse uh, in Finland. What this Creative Commons attribution license means is that you have to give attribution. You have uh, free use for this uh, data, for example, for text and data mi mining. You can also use this uh, for, for commercial purposes, uh, but uh, the attribution has to be done. So you have to give credit uh, to the creators of, of these uh, art articles. You have to attribute them. And the way to attribute them is mentioned in the license. So when you are releasing something with this license, you yourself de <coughs> define how the attribution is done, how the crediting is done, uh, what is, what is uh, mentioned there. Uh, in the credit. Um, and so then there are also, there's even a wider open access than CC BY with attribution. That is the waiver. It's not a license because there are no terms. Uh, it's a total uh, annihilation of rights, the Creative Commons public domain dedication. And uh, some journals, even the gold open access means uh, that you give openness, uh, for example, in Chemistry Central Journal, uh, uh, you allow the data included in the article to be made available under this Creative Commons public domain dedication, uh, unless otherwise stated. Um, and uh, then there is, for example, another definition of open. Uh, if you choose the green open access with Elsevier, uh, then you are required uh, to choose the Creative Commons by 
uh, non-commercial, no derivatives license. So then the articles cannot be used for commercial purposes. Uh, obviously, uh, Elsevier wants to do the commercial things themselves. And, and then there is the no derivatives. So for example, you cannot take that material and use it for, for tra training, training materials at your own university or something like that. And the embargo times can be 12 to 48 uh, months, so uh, longer than, uh, for example, at Horizon 2020. Um, and uh, then, again, Elsevier also has the gold uh, uh, open access uh, possibilities. Uh, with Elsevier, if you choose gold open access, you have to choose yourself which Creative Commons license you are going to use. And here again, uh, you have to be knowledgeable about these licenses, what will serve uh, your uh, needs long, long term or, or, or short, short term or long term. Uh, so these uh, Creative Commons licenses have become uh, the standard way of defining. Uh, and, and you really have to know how to, how to use them. And just to link these two, uh, the text and data mining is also something that Elsevier wants to license also to the publications. Uh, so holding on to the uh, text and data mining um, right and also licensing that to academic uh, subscribers is one, one, one of the ways of, of doing, doing business. And uh, we see this also with other companies such as Twitter, that you cannot use the Twitter data, which is very interesting data for researchers openly, that Twitter wants to own it and create the APIs and make researchers use the Twitter APIs to access that data. So the big data hype is very well understood by the commercial uh, companies providing interesting data. And, and uh, the idea data is the new oil is very well understood. And the I business idea seems to be to keep hold of that data and provide access to it through your own um, uh, APIs. And, um, and again, uh, for open access content with Elsevier, uh, the author chooses the user license. So the author makes that either per permitted or, or not permitted uh, for other, other users. Uh, okay. And here is again about the versions that that was my team, that it's not just black and white, is it open or is it not? There are other versions, the, the openness depends on also what kind of versions we're talking about. The most uh, closely guarded version is usually the version number three, uh, the final version with the publishers, uh, page numbers and logos and, and layout uh, there. So these were the questions that I often uh, work with that the researchers ask, uh, what does the openness mean? What version, what license? Uh, and, and choosing these and understanding choices made by others uh, are, are the most recurring questions because the, these, uh, all the shades are, are present in the openness. Uh, uh, one interesting thing is that one tool to handle this are the uh, Serpa Romeo database. And one thing that has come up is that uh, you should also check about the green open access possibility 
uh, with the research funder. Uh, we have learned, for example, that the Academy of Finland um, open access policy embargo times are not absolute. That maybe sometimes you should ask the research funder if you have a possibility of uh, publishing uh, with a really high impact magazine and the, uh, and the embargo time is not exactly what is wished from the funder side. So there, there, there might be some um, room allowed for, for, for discussion. This, this has occurred, but I'm not promising you anything, but this is something that has come up recently that, uh, that it might be uh, a thing that you could discuss sometime with the research funder that are these, are these embargo times absolute. So um, now I try, hopefully can access my page, which I would very much like to show to you my, or oh, this open access Alto page. I guess I should have opened it, <coughs> opened it before. I'm sorry. So um, uh, we have, okay. yeah. So uh, here. Marco, can you make this visible? Okay. <coughs> okay, great, thanks. Um, so we have here um, discussed many, many of uh, um, many, many different questions, for example. We have the terminology, we have different uh, funders and, and their requirements, um, and um, different information. So this is not university-specific uh, information. Uh, this is uh, general information that can be used as background uh, to your research uh, organizations. Uh, tailored open access pages. And um, uh, one thing that I already mentioned is, but it's very important to think, and I think this has been a recurring theme today, when you are planning, then you should start asking questions about open access uh, at the earliest stage possible. And actually, uh, my problem is not frequently asked questions. My problem is that I don't get uh, questions frequently enough. <laughs> so I'm a bit worried. Is this something that everybody already at the university knows so well <laughs> that I never get questions? <laughs> or is it just that <laughs> it's not general awareness yet? So, so I hope that we all who serve researchers and all, all you who work in, in research, I hope that there will be more frequently asked questions about uh, open access because I think that is, that is now the uh, not that is now the uh, problem. Uh, one other recurring theme is then sort of like the dark side of of um, the dark side uh, of of the open access movement and the gold open access fees are the predatory publishers, and they are really out there and sending e emails to you and. And, um, and, and you don't want to get involved with the wrong kind of open access. So, so check with your uh, researchers and, and your contacts, which are the, uh, and, and there are many, many um, places where you can find out uh, which, which are the reliable uh, uh, scientific publishers with Im impact. So this is this is one of the uh, one of the uh, frequently asked questions. Unfortunately, that there are the predatory publishers that are offering open access for a fee, and uh, you don't really want to be associated with them. And then with the open data, the question is, where should I put my data? What metadata to choose? And that is, the, that is the question which we are now trying to answer here.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria.